Kirchhoff's laws. Okay, the first law, it states that the sum of the currents entering a junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction. So let's have an example. We could have a junction here. Two currents going in. Let's call this I1 and I2. And maybe two currents going out. I3 and I4. Now, the sum of the currents going in must equal the sum of the currents going out. So we can say, mathematically, I1 plus I2 must equal the sum of the currents going out. I3 plus I4. So let's put some numbers in. If I've got 0 0.5 amps here for I1 and 2.5 amps for I2, in. Maybe I3 is 2 amps. Well, what's I4? Well, all I have to do is simply plug the numbers in. So I1 is 0 0.5 plus I2, which is 2.5, is equal to, well, 3. Uh, current 3 going out is 2 plus I4. 0 0.5 plus 2.5 is 3. Move the 2 over here, and we find that I4 must equal to 1 amp. So that's Kirchhoff's first law. And the, the reason the, the law exists is because you've got electrons coming into this junction here. Now the electrons have got to go somewhere. You can't have electrons going into a junction and then just, di just disappearing. That's not physics. The, the electrons coming in, they have to go somewhere. And it's to do with the conservation of charge. Electrons have got negative charge. The universe says charge has to be conserved, so they can't just disappear. The second law okay, states that the sum of the EMFs, so electromotive force, around a closed loop is equal to the potential difference across the load. Okay, now this is a consequence of energy. What is an EMF? Well, an EMF has got nothing to do with force. It's the energy converted to electrical energy per unit charge. So a battery or a cell takes electrical energy, sorry, takes chemical energy and changes it into electrical energy. Then something like a resistor in a circuit, it will take electrical energy and, well, a resistor will probably turn it into heat. Or a light bulb or a diode, uh, a light-emitting diode will change it into light. So let's draw a little circuit. So maybe we've got a basic cell with an EMF of 1.5 volts.
Maybe we've just got a, a resistor here. Now, conventional current goes from positive to negative, and I've just got a very simple loop here. So the EMF that's coming out of my cell here, which is 1.5, it must also equal the voltage of the potential difference across my resistor here. This is also going to equal 1.5 volts. Now I might have a different circuit where I've got one cell with two resistors. And just for this example, we're gonna give them equal resistance. Now we'll still say we've got 1.5 volts. Now this time, as long as my resistors are equal, let's just call them R. Around this closed loop here, well, we're going to have 1.5 volts going into our system. Therefore, that voltage is going to be shared equally between these two resistors because they've got an equal value. It doesn't matter if these resistors do or don't have an equal resistance, it's just that this 1.5 volt going into my circuit will be shared between them and the sum of the EMF, uh, the sum of the potential differences across here will equal the EMF going into the circuit.